your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Hallelujah. Holo a kibiri soto lor so dio. Hello anes on teri kibiri lara so tere. Thank you, Jesus. Ha, ah, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Rain down. Rain down, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Hello, it is on the way, it is on the read. Just a lot of it is so there. Oh. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Do it, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord, Jesus. Hello, everyone. I am, yeah, pondering the great I am, right? I hope all is well. Hope all is well with you. Um, the Lord's been talking to me for, for days and days about vision. So good. There's just no words to describe how good God is. He's just so good. He's just so good. Thank you, Jesus. I want to begin this a little bit different. So I'm going to start with a prayer. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, for your spirit. Lord, I thank you for your spirit, your precious spirit, Lord. That guides us and comforts us and edifies us, encourages us. That's there for us. When maybe no one else is there, Lord, you're there. And I just praise you, Jesus, for who you are. <laughs> you're so amazing, Lord. You're just so good. And I just thank you, Jesus, for being my best friend. I thank you, Jesus, for never leaving my side, Lord, for never leaving the side of your children, Lord, that you never leave us and you never forsake us, that you are so amazing in the way that you love us, Lord. And I just praise you, Jesus. I just praise you, Lord. I thank you for whatever it is you want to say. Have your way, Lord, and say whatever it is that you want to say. And say, here I am, Lord, use me. <laughs> help me, Lord, remove my wretched flesh, Lord, and help me to, to deliver this word, Lord. Your glory, Lord, your glory. Your glory. Say whatever it is you want to say, Lord. 
And I just thank you for who you are, Lord. For who you are to us, Lord. For bringing us out. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In your precious, holy, and mighty name, Jesus. Amen. My Lord, oh. His, his spirit is glorious, heavy. <laughs> I tell you what, God will get you through whatever you face. If you just give it to him, if you just call on him, if you just ask him what it is that he's trying to show you in your struggles, in your past, in the, in the mistakes that you've made, he will show you. He is so mighty to save. He has a purpose in everything. Even your biggest mistake. The things that you thought you couldn't come back from. He has a reason for it all. So he's, I'm so emotional. I'm just so overwhelmed with thankfulness. So deep inside my heart for who Jesus is. To me and to those around me and to those I may come in contact with. <laughs> He's changing our vision. <laughs> he is changing the way we see things. It's a time where our vision is being changed in so many ways. The way we look at people, you know, in our lives and those around us, he's, you know, you never know what God is going to do, <laughs> how he's going to move, how he's going to change the way people might look at you, how you may look at the things you've been through and how he'll change it in an instant. And he's always moving, revealing his plan. And what we think we know, we may, we may not have a clue. And he took me to John 11. And forgive me because Holy well, Spirit is so heavy. And I thank you, Jesus. You know, his presence will get us through everything. You know, we oftentimes, we think we need, <laughs> you know, money or a better job or a better car or new clothes or a new home or, you know, different friends or a boyfriend, a girlfriend. No, we need the presence of God. We need his presence. To come and wash us clean, to come and talk to us, to come and download things, to come and renew our strength. Yes. To come and make us more like Him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because that's what it really is. This whole journey on this earth is just to see Jesus for who He really is. Because you know, who Jesus is to you is who Jesus will be through you. Thank you, Jesus. Because he's always good. <laughs> he's always good. And we can take the worst circumstances and give it to him. And he'll make it good. <laughs> he'll make it good. It's just who he is. It's just what he does. I don't care what you've done, what you've been through. He'll turn it around for good. And he'll use it to help someone. To show himself strong. 
puedo ver eso te le quiero eso a ti ah Jesus my God all the way to someday we all want to know what we're here for we're here for a purpose each of us we have you know a specific purpose and and path that God longs for us to choose but it's narrow you know the Bible says narrow is the path that leads to eternal life and few find it and broad is the way that leads to destruction and many go there you know but this narrow path is so beautiful it's so hope filled it's so satisfying but oftentimes through these transformational moments he's changing our vision and he does it time again this is such a pivotal moment in the body of Christ my god thank you jesus it's just such a, a time that oh, so many are looking at things, circumstances, um, people, decisions. Yes, that word decisions, decisions, decisions. You know, we're looking at it different. You know, God will change our vision to fit his vision. You know, it's funny because we have no idea what God's gonna do. We may know in part, we may know a glimpse, but if we just listen to him, thank you, Jesus. If we just listen to his voice, his still small voice, if we just follow his voice, if we just follow his lead, and we go and we do those things, we might not want to do. We go those places we might not want to go. We surrender our will. We surrender it all. He'll do things you could never imagine. You know, exceedingly, abundantly, beyond all that we could ask or think according to the power that works within us. It's the power of God. It's not ours. <laughs> not at all. In fact, it's our weakness that makes him strong. It's amazing. It's so, <laughs> it's so opposite of what the world says is strength. <laughs> and we know the world needs Jesus and we know they're lost and they're not happy. We can look around and see so many that are unhappy, you know, and God's even giving you a different vision when you look at them, when you look them in their eyes, when you when you sit from a back and you see them in in their sin, he's giving you even a different outlook on them. You know, Jesus sat with those very people, although he didn't do what they did. See, he had the power of God resting and residing within him. And he could overcome every obstacle, every opposition, every temptation. And not just that, but he changed his atmosphere. Thank you, Jesus. He changed them. They didn't change him. They couldn't do it because he knew who he was and he knew what he came for. And he's been talking to me about how he's changing our vision. And we're looking at things different. And we're looking at circumstances different. And we're looking at the people in our lives different. You know, categories and, you know, how we label, you know, those and who they are to us. My God, be light as the guy we did so nari. Because God has a plan. And a man plans his day, but the Lord orders his steps, right? It's funny. Because, um, wow, I hear you. God likes to surprise us. He does. He likes to surprise us. He delights in us. You know, he delights in you. Imagine that. 
that the creator delights in you. And his love, it will change us. It will change our vision. And as we come deeper and wider into the knowledge of his love, it has to change us. There is no way around it. But what, what does it take? You know, I think if we would admit it, there's always something that we would want to change about ourselves. Something we would want to do different. Something, you know, we wish we could, you know, um, change about our past or, you know, things we regret. You know, but, but Jesus. So he took me to John 20 and 11. And this is a scene so beautiful. You know, Jesus had been preparing the disciples for his departure for quite some time, but they, they couldn't quite grasp it. They didn't, you know, really understand it, that he would have to suffer, you know, the crucifixion, death, and that he would be raised again. They didn't, hallelujah. Hallelujah, he is risen. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. They didn't understand that, you know, and so they were sad. They were so sad. He was he was gone, right? He had been crucified, and you know, they looked upon his body. They saw him dead. And they were sad. Hmm. There's things God wants to resurrect in your life. There's things he wants you to look at differently. But how do we do that? You know, it's easy to say, well, just look at it different. But how do we? How do we do it? So he took me to John. I'm saying this again because <laughs> I'm letting the spirit have his way. If there's one thing that I've learned my time here on earth it is this i want his spirit to have his way in my life and it is then and only then that i am satisfied thank you jesus thank you jesus if there's any advice that i could give anyone on this earth it would be to let him have his way in your life and if you don't know when he's talking to you read you'll begin to hear him in new ways but he has instructions. And as we listen, we go deeper in the promises, in the life, and the purpose that he has for us. And it's beautiful. It's why we're here. It's why so many are unhappy, because they don't know what they're here for. And maybe some think they know, and they don't. So 2011, Jesus. John 20 and 11. So this is outside the tomb. But Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. And I want to stop here. I hear you. Thank you, Jesus. She was still looking for Jesus. <laughs> Somebody catch that revelation. She's weeping. She's sorrowful. She doesn't have an answer. She has no answers. And she's still looking for Jesus. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to go any further. The Spirit's stopping there. But he suddenly appears. And she still doesn't recognize him. <laughs> you know, I, yeah, I advise you to read it. But finally, she realized this is Jesus. He is risen. And in a split second, God changes her vision and changes her life. She, she goes from weeping to rejoicing. And that's what God wants to do. Thank you, Jesus. He wants to do that for you. He wants to do that for me. He wants us to be rejoicing. Even in those things that we would change, those things that, you know, are so ugly, you know. It is in that place 
that God will do the deepest work in us and he will use us the most. Why? Because it requires us to let go. It requires us to see ourselves for the weak vessels that we are. But God, he's so strong. And he is opening up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's opening up those gates. He's opening up those doors that maybe you had thought you had already walked through. <laughs> You know, maybe you thought you you had already gotten through this, this place in your life. You know, maybe it's a tragedy. Maybe you've lost someone that was dear to you, and he's giving you new eyes to see it differently. Yes, Lord. That's what it is. It's a season of transition where we must choose to see things different. Because he's healed so many things in your heart but there's more you know there's always more there's always more that's the beauty of this life with god that there's always more he wants to do in us there's always more he wants to do through us there's always more he wants to do for us he wants us encouraged and focused Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You see, because we're taking kingdom. You see, we're taking ground. Hallelujah. Why? Obedience. You know, the things God asks you to do might not make sense. You know, it might not seem normal to this world. It may not be even what you wanted to do. You know, this is the choice we make. What are we here for? For ourselves? For his glory? Oh, hallelujah. Yes. He's leading us out. He's leading us out. He's leading us out. Hallelujah. He says, I'm bringing you out. I'm bringing you out. I'm bringing you out. For my glory. For my glory. For my glory. Hallelujah. Yes. You know, the difference that he can make in someone else's life requires your yes. And your yes again. And your yes again. And I'll tell you this. I've seen God do some pretty amazing things because of someone else's yes. I've seen God do some really amazing things because I said yes to him. It is in our yes that he can move. It is in our yes that he can do what he wants to do for other people and for you. Let him change your vision. Look to the author and finisher of your faith. Look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. He will change your vision. He will take those broken things and he will make them beautiful. But not just that. He will use them to help someone else. You just never know what God's going to do. And if you look at Jesus, he was one. One that said yes. He said yes. Look how God can use one to say yes. And he just wants to touch other people through your life. He just wants, yes, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, to make you truly satisfied. You know, because Jesus is enough. In fact, he's more than enough. He's amazing. He's amazing. He's so good. His love is so pure. He has no ill intentions towards us. He just loves us. 
And he wants to shine that love through us. But in order to do that, we have to go through those valley moments where he shapes and he molds and he guides us to be more like him. You know, it's a whole new era we're walking into and it's a time where it's so unknown. You know, it's so uncomfortable. It's new, you know, and it's not what you expected it to be at all. <laughs> what God does is not usually what we expect. You know, we think he's doing one thing and he's doing something totally different. But it's in our obedience that he can move, that he can work. That he can allow you to be his hands and feet in the earth. That he can allow you to be that vessel that gets on your knees to pray for those places, those people, those, those things that go against his will, his plan. Because in the end, that's all. That's all that matters. Only thing that will last is what we do for him. Not even the things we do for people, you know. It, it's got to be for him first. He's got to be the reason that we get up and do the things we do. You know, but he'll take the worst, darkest individual. He'll heal them, he'll sanctify them, and he'll make them whole. In fact, I think that's what God longs to do, is take the vilest person, the most possessed, demon-possessed individual, and take them from darkness to light, to show his glory, to show the world who he really is, because they can appreciate it. Because they know what darkness is. They know what being unloved feels like. God is beautiful and he is amazing. He is just, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Don't ever count anyone out. Because God is not in the business of counting anyone out. It's just not what he does. Thank you, Jesus, yes. And he's changing your vision. He's giving you eyes to see himself in a better light. He's giving you eyes to love yourself in a new way and to see others in a new way, to see that circumstance in a new light, to see that tragedy in a different way. And this is a mighty time that he is changing the vision in the body of Christ because we really never know what he's gonna do. Our job is to obey his voice. Our job is to wait patiently as he speaks and to move and to be still when he tells us to be still. Be encouraged that no matter where you are, he's got a plan for it. No matter what you've done, what you've been through, he's got a plan for it. We can't understand his ways. He's so intelligent. He's so high above the human capacity to think and plan and, and proceed and perceive. But he's amazing. Yes, Lord, we must trust him. We just must trust him. He'll lead us and guide us into the promises. And I'll tell you this, his plan is the best. And that might not be anything that what you thought it would be. It might be weird, it might be <laughs> intriguing. 
But God is always good. His plan is the best. And he is the only thing that will satisfy us. His plan, his way, his will, his purpose is where you will be content. And I just encourage someone to trust God. I encourage someone to cry out to God. I encourage someone to ask him for help. He's right there. And he loves you so very much. He loves us all more than words could say. Who he is is beyond understanding. But he's always good. Let him change your vision. Let him change the way you see yourself. Let him change the way you see you. Let him change the way you see you into the way he does. Because what he sees is the finished masterpiece. And he just looks on you with awe. He does. You may not believe that. You may not know, but it's true. Let him change you. Let him love you back to life. Thank you, Jesus. This is what he's done for me. He's loved me back to life from a place of near death, despair, hopelessness, helplessness, no answers. And he is the answer. Not only will he give of his self, he'll restore everything that the locusts have stolen. He'll restore all those things the enemy came to take away. And he'll make them way better than they were before. That's what he's doing in this hour for many of you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I love you all so much. I pray this helps someone. God is always good. Till the next time. Kinesan, the Lord is so pale.